from town to town with a horse trailer dragging behind. Just a cowboy lost in a modern world, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Not a day goes by, I don't think about how my life used to be. Now I'm out of my prime and I'm losing time and nobody's calling for me. Call my name, come round up time, now the four-wheeler takes my place And the cowboy life that I've always loved is getting lost without a trace But I won't give up and I won't give in, I'm a cowboy till I die And I know there's got to be a place for me underneath big western sky Headed out west, gonna do my best to leave the civilized world behind Just me, my saddle, and an honest horse will try to go back in time Where surely there'd be a warm campfire or a bunkhouse calling my name But tonight I'll sleep in my pickup truck cause I'm still not playing their game world may turn, but the thing that can't change is the way I feel inside. A prairie fire may burn itself out, but you can't snuff a cowboy's pride. I'll be what I am, and I'll do what I do. This life is worth fighting for. Yeah, the cowboy life is a life for me, for me and 10,000 more. The cowboy life is a life for Welcome back to True Horse. This episode of Roundtable, I'm going to talk about the last video I did on the harness train and getting the horse used to the shafts. You know, I admit, I think I said something last Roundtable, and I said it in the video, but I want to say it again. You know, I made a mistake, I got ahead of myself, and uh, so I went back. You know, never, never, when you're working with horses, be afraid to go back a step. I mean, it's just nature of the beast. Now, in the video, it went pretty smooth. It was, to, for you out there, it's probably boring, but as I always say, boring is good when you're working with horses. I'm not one... You know, if something comes up during a little bit of excitement, I leave it in. But I've seen so many videos now where they're taking video of people being stupid stuff, and people on the internet are saying how great these people are, and I watch them, I'm thinking they're doing stupid stuff. But that's a different time and a different subject. Now with the harness training with this horse, you know, it's went pretty smooth for the most part, especially when going through all the steps. You know, like I showed on one video where we got him pulling the skid, and after he got pulling and I could drive him, uh, and he was quiet, and then we went Got her east of the cart, but that's a place where you know I had a, got a good mouth on her, so you know we had a little bit of excitement. But I was able to control her. But then I decided I made a deal out with James, the owner, and decided to go back a step and rigged up the PVC poles like you see on her in the video. 
and which that way, you know, she don't have something pulling behind her that could get her in trouble, and I can keep her safe. Now she reacted on the poles on a turn, she'd go straight. When she feel that pole hit her side, she'd react, so, you know, I didn't show the beginning of it, but the beginning, me and James was on each side of her, and uh, in a video that I just put up with him driving and all, you know, spend some time with it. And people, I was wondering, when will I go to the next step? Well, we'll see you tonight when James come over and we work her. Our next step will come where, in like for like two or three days in a row, I can put her on the sha PVC shafts, and she don't react at all. And got you know I can drive her well and everything else. And that's when I'll go back and start working with. The cart again so that should be pretty easy the next time I mean so that's pretty much sequence we'll be going at it and also I'm going to take this this is going to be short as you know like I said I'm just talking about a video and it's pretty well self-explanatory and uh had comment, positive comments from it on YouTube. And one noticed that when I was driving her, I didn't talk to her. And I don't do much talking when I'm working a horse. I mean, most time I'm wasting my breath, I do. I know a lot of people talk to them a lot, but I'll be honest with you, what I've seen in the past and my experience the more somebody talks to the horse, it's not for the horse, it's for them themselves. It's a way to keep them, you know, calm down, not from being nervous. So I don't say much. You know, I will tell the horse, whoa, to get him to stop and back up. And, uh, in harness, I'll tell him one foot or step up. I don't use, you know, or a single horse. I don't use he and haul. I mean G and haul. You should save that for a team. But single horse, I don't see no benefit of it. Uh, but I'm having fun with it. Something different. And, oh, anyway, so about talking to it, one person, Mark from Texas, he noticed that I didn't talk to the horse, but then I had James driving it because, you know, this is new to him. So he's got to learn to drive it, and uh, he's got to have driving line, what I call driving line management. So he, I mean, it's a different ball game, and uh, which I'll probably get in more detail about that when I hook her up to the harness. I mean, to a cart but you notice when Philly got a little nervous James started talking to him which is fine I don't have no objections to it you know he's just verbally cueing it when he's cueing with his hands so you know I don't have no qualms with it and you know like I said just knew James too and like I said, a lot of times when people talk to the horse, it, you know, they're trying, they're actually calming themselves down. So, you know, it did have benefits, or it does have its benefits. And just as long as I've been at it, I shouldn't have to really do much talking. I know what, to, what I'm expected to get out of that horse, and I know what it can do at that moment. And that's what I work on. No if and buts about it. I talk loud and clear to that horse. I mean, that's the biggest thing you got to. The horses talk loud and clear to them. Now, James, you know, after 
I don't know if I brought this up before, but I'm going to bring it up again because you can't, some things you can't bring up enough because people do have selective hearing. They notice, you know, every time we go up a different step, it's almost like the filly forgets what she, you know, learned, somewhat learned in the past or somewhat forgets. You know, they come back to you quicker. But with horses, that's the way it is. Whenever you, in, see, I have the mindset, whenever I introduce something new to a horse, I have the mindset that that horse don't know squat. I don't expect it let, like you got an arena horse, and they'll slide and spin and do all this fancy stuff in the arena. But you take them out on trail for the first time, and you try to do this stuff, and they go what I call brain dead. You know, because it's something new to the horse. So what do you do about it? You know, me, I probably ask for simple stuff at first while I'm riding for maybe some half passes going down the road, maybe some stops, a turn on the forehand or something, you know, just so I got control of the feet. Because, Sydney, I tell you, when I trail ride, I've got a bad habit of schooling a horse because I get bored just going down the trail, you know, so that way whatever the horse learns in the arena, they can at in time of transfer to the trail, but I don't expect it to transfer over trail the first time. Well, cause I, I know horses, that's just, you get few, some that will, you know, naturally take to it pretty easy. And then some are just, <laughs> they're silly. But, you know, the horses are individuals just like us. So whenever you're introduce something new to a horse, no, there's going to be, you know, it's not going to go be a cakewalk. So it, you know, things might come up. But if you do your work, like with this filly, I put a good mouth on her. So if she does get silly, we got control of her and she's not bolting away, you know, with something dragging behind her. And that's, I'm going to try to keep that from happening because, you know, it's just like riding a horse. You keep it, get them horses in the mindset that they're safe while you're handling them. It's going to take a lot easier. And every horse, you know, they train a different route. I got a rescue here. I got some point, if I find out she's not pregnant with Charlie, that's another story crap happens you know I gotta find her home and I've been on her a couple of times but it's been so hot during the summer I backed off of her because what I got to do to get over some of her stuff and that's temperament wise she's you know if you leave her alone she's not gonna hurt you you pick up her feet and everything but when you start asking stuff for her and you get on her back, just don't ask nothing of her. So, and I know the owner's going to be in a hurry to get her out, but I'm not charging her nothing now. I mean, I'm not even charging her for a feed, because my thing, I don't care if I got to go to court. She's not leaving here until I know she's safe. You know, I don't care what she knows in the saddle. I want her to leave here safe. Well, I know somebody else can ride, work her, and not get hurt. And I don't give a damn how much somebody tells me they know. Because if I don't see them working a horse, there could be blowing smoke up my butt. And I don't appreciate people blowing smoke up my butt. You know, now first concern is the horse. And she's, I'll be admit, if she's pregnant with Charlie, she's not going to go here nowhere until she's full. And if I have to go for it, because I've had a couple of falls that people at the mares were bred to smoke it, and they said, oh, when she has the foal, you can have the babies. Well, it never came through. They always renege on me. I mean, as soon as that foal hits the ground, well, 
you know, maybe we should. Let's keep it. And they'll come up with some bullshit story that the horse foal died or something. You know, so I never see him. And this is one, if she has Charlie, I want to see it. Because it's going to be born on this forum. And also, you know, Charlie's is an expensive horse and his foal is going to be expensive. But it's not the money thing. It's what's right. So that's the end of that story. I'm going to stop it before it starts. Oh, about the comments. You know, I've had nice comments and I appreciate them. You know, a lot of people are really glad that more or less I'm back. I'll get the audio sorted out here. I got one more direction I'm going to go here. And if that doesn't pan out, I got another direction I got to go. You know, a lot of people think that all I do, you put a camera on a tripod and get out there and put the film, start filming. Well, if you want halfway, even halfway decent videos, there's more to it than that. I mean, because the audio is important. I mean, the audio is just as important as the visual. And then, of course, you know, I'm lucky I don't get carried away with editing. But right now, it takes me a while just to put up the video or the harness of me having to do a vo little bit of voiceover. Oh, God. I don't know how many times I had to watch that video. And you're talking about a 30 minute video. So I got to watch it all the way through the first time to figure out where I want to do a voiceover. And then I got to go through and do the voice over and then while I'm doing voiceover you know my parent might be yelling or something so I gotta stop get rid of that voiceover and then start it all over again working on so that simple 30 minute video took me all day to edit it finish it and download it on YouTube and all so it's not as if I just throw you know, like TikTok video or some of these other YouTube, I just throw it on there. You know, so there's more to it. I think James is not realizing. I mean, and plus, some days you think you got everything charged up and go out there and film, and you find out, oh crap, camera's not charged up enough, or your mic's not charged up, or something. I mean, there's so, if you name it, it's going to happen, I'm telling you. You know, so, you know, there is work into putting these videos together. It's not just download it to YouTube from the camera or whatever. It's, like I said, so, but I do appreciate the comments. And, you know, I've had people been watching my videos you realize my video has been up here for 13 years from that first I think 30 second video of me and Suka uh, and uh, unfortunately he's no longer with us now but it's still hard to believe but uh, then I've had people like James the owner of the Philly he's been watching them just about from the start and like I said, he ended up just living right down the road. Now I got people that's been watching it six, seven years, you know. And uh, I really appreciate that. I mean, I listen and I see the comments. I don't really answer them too often. Once in a while, I will. And, uh, somebody asked me about Smoking Lady. How's she doing? She's doing pretty good, actually. Uh, You'll be seeing her on video shortly. I should be out on her back riding her, but I'm trying to get somebody younger than me. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to be 69. And I know that first ride, I'm not going to be bucking, but she's liable to run around that round pin a few times. And so my next step with her, I got her a lot calmer. I mean, She's not the same horse that she was when she came here. 
I mean, anybody go in or stall now on pet owner where for a long time it was just me. But now she feels more comfortable with strangers and everything, so that's good. And, and uh, so she's come along good. So her next stage with her will be getting little one out and start working over top of little one, get her used to the bit from the top of another horse. So that way all my P's and Q's be dotted on that first ride with her, no matter if I take it or somebody else takes it. So that's where she's at. So I appreciate you asking about her. You know, she's doing good and she's fat and sassy. So once again, I'd like to say thank you for all you who watch these videos. And I do appreciate the comments. Heck, I even like the bad comments. I mean, and I get some silly ones once in a while, but the way I look at it, these people might disagree with me, but at some point in time, they're going to get in trouble, and I never will hear about it. But some of them videos is going to resonate in their head. And they're going to say, oh, I think I might try that. Damn, it worked. But they won't never come back and admit it. You know, that's just human nature. So, as I always say, be true to horse and they'll be true to you. First and foremost, be true to yourself. God bless and take care.